Yeah, Carl, sir. Very good. You get further, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Media Watch. We are still continuing with our home edition, and I have two fantastic guests with me. A little bit of background about who they are. We have met Suki before, and he's quite well known uh, around the circuit uh, in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, where you describe yourself as a Sikh celebrity businessman. That was an interesting one. I've not seen that before, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, in the circuit, <laughs> well, in the circuit of people who are. Um, able to help people, uh, coach them. Uh, they are a person who's got a lot of experience, so they're counting on real value uh, in terms of the people that they work with. And he has an enormous following right now. Uh, and Gary uh, Settleworth, who's a lovely uh, person who works with him. Um, we were talking about the roles, uh, both of you are strategists. Uh, let me tell you a quick background about Suki to start off with. Um, it's one of the youngest uh, millionaires. Um, I think by the time he was about 27 with his family business, um, he has uh, been a Forbes uh, judge and continues to do that. If you know about business, Forbes is a very highly renowned uh, organization as well as publication, uh, and they are advisors. Uh, he's a TEDx speaker. Um, he has also developed a whole lot of methodologies as well uh, and continues to grow from strength to strength. I think one of your businesses uh, within your group of companies, the Suki, um, I think you call it the Wahawala Group, um, you have uh, also the business boardroom, which is a very successful way of uh, bringing people together. Now, Gary, um, Selworth, lovely to see you, Gary. Uh, in Asia since we last met. Uh, thank you for thank you. taking time out, both of you, to come on the show. A um, little bit of background about uh, Gary. Uh, over 26 years of banking experience, over 20 years, you're young, you're very young, actually, uh, years of actually being in the uh, coaching. Always, always compliment your guests, you know, uh, in, the, in the coaching field. <laughs> Uh, in the uh, field of um, uh, development, personal development as well. I won't steal your thunder. I'll get you to talk more about the kind of things that you do. Uh, but I think, again, the combination of having actual real experience and also having the qualifications to back it up and also providing those skills to individuals who will be looking for that support, right? As not only in terms of their current career, if they're starting out as you know, graduates or whatever, but those who are in career and are looking for their next progression and how they can actually do that. And both of you share the common uh, approach of developing methodologies that really work. And I, we were having a chat earlier on during the day today that it is about experience, but more than experience, it's also about providing techniques that they can use immediately in the field. Now, the three things that we wanted to talk about today was I wanted to talk about optimism. I want to talk about also the the lockdown, how has it really impacted people in terms of, has it given in your views, because you're in this industry of personal development as well as coaching, as well as advising people to become better business people, has it given them a chance to be retro, uh, you know, kind of looked at a retrospective? Have they said, actually, do you know what? Now that I do this in my business, I could do this, although I can't actually see customers. And the final piece of the puzzle really is around the area of, you know, being optimistic but in the confidence context, you know, as businesses start to unlock in terms of their own business's potential, they need to build confidence not only in themselves, but also in the fact that customers will come back and they themselves will have to invest in their businesses to be able to make it safer for people to come back. So that's a really interesting area I thought we'd uh, develop it with you this week for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. So uh, thank you, Suki. So let's let's start off with Suki first. Suki, tell us, you know what's what's your view do you think that you know it's hard at this time i know you've been having a lot of outreach programs to people that have been um effectively stressed by uh, the lockdown situation whether it be work or whether it be personal life do you think it's now a chance to be optimistic just uh, if i may start off with uh, my humble honor i'm very very glad that you brought me on on uh, today and uh, really humbled to be honest so with reference to one of the questions that you just asked there whether it's a time to be optimistic again that if i can start that in a second um what i've found is we've taken action and we'll talk about it a bit later i'll let gary talk about the social side of things what we've been trying to achieve to create that, that samaritans type environment before a younger generation connected with an audience is called the Feel Good Friday uh, social movement. But if I may, I'll ask Gary to talk a little bit about that. Um, but going directly to your point in question was how and do we have enough evidence to become optimistic again? Well, 
I think as it comes to the economy, we should always be optimistic within ourselves because mankind, humanity as a whole, has always uh, faced adversity and then thrived thereafter. We've, we're, we're ingrained by that. We have Guruji within ourselves. We have God within ourselves. We have the ability. So where there is that understanding of God or universe within ourselves, how can there ever be anything else but optimism and uh, gratitude for being alive? But let's, if I go into more technicality, if I can, the understanding of our current situations, we've we've seen it very clearly. And if I may talk a little bit about the, the, the energetic flows or the wave of what we classify as lockdown, because you specified lockdown, there is a real science to all the lockdowns, which actually resembles and reflects within war, within governmental turns and phases within the countries. So the principle actually is something that I talk about quite a lot about is actually very, very true. Um, and if you're aware of a slight psychology structure, which is called the DISC, uh, disc philosophy, this is when it's a psychometric understanding. It's like an, a, a scientific assessment of one's understanding of the world or of themselves. So it's like having a, a, a like a bird on your shoulder, always watching you with a camera, in essence, and re reciting it back to yourself with a simple report. But from the understanding of the DISC psychometric understanding and the philosophy, there's a deeper understanding, which I've written within with Maharaj, Maharaj Skirpa, may I share? I use the word I, but I must reframe it honestly. It's Mira Muj Mikichinahi Jo Kichas Kotera. Whatever I have within me is not mine. I'm just talking about what Maharaj has given and gifted to the to the freeware of this world. So in context of I, I'm just going to share that when I wrote the Synegus method, it's specifically about making complexity really simple to understand with actionable steps within our three commandments of understanding as well. So in essence, there is an energetic flow of every single change in the planet. So there are the dominant areas, the influencer areas, the D, the I, the influential times, um, the compliant, the, the, sorry, the stability times and the compliant times, that's DISC. So DISC comes across, and I'm gonna be very quick with this because I know there's a short uh, bite-sized conversation around this, if I may. Basically, if I give the unlocked code for reference of the flow of the energy of a lockdown, of war, of governmental uh, political agenda and change, uh, world global structure, it always goes in the same four cycles and then recite and then recites, you know, re restarts again, uh, six cyclical. So the first energy that is shown is dominancy. The dominance energy is about end result, uh, fight, flight, getting really powerfully controlled and my way or the highway. And I think of just me, does that make sense? Myself, ego, understanding. So in principle of aligning it to, let's say the UK in specific, and it's the same across the globe, by the way, uh, when we first started getting told around the second week of, of, of March that there's gonna be this pandemic issue um, and 23rd, 26th of March was when it locked down. What happened is they went into a fight and flight situation. They all went off and started, you know, there was a joke around, and I don't mean this in a very uh, a loose way because I have had people within my family and extended family lose their lives to um, COVID-19. So I know this is a, on a hundred. Absolutely, yes. Right, 11 people, to be honest. And it's a very, very large interest and a uh, very big thing that's happened to the world, Sad Sanguji. So the principle of this is I'm just going to give my version of it to try and help people understand if I can. Uh, so what you've got is a dominancy energy. This is when we fight flight, we go straight into the mode of pulling, taking, uh, absorbing gluttony, greed, all those elements kick in first, uh, punch jaw to kick off, and we start to think of myself first. So the en energy is about going to fill our house up with 10 pints of milk when I'm only using one pint a week um, and it's going to go off over purchasing, over exaggerating. So that's the first energy that happens and you can liken it to all of that's what happened in the UK and happened across the globe as well. The second energy panic, that shifts, panic, 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 yes, panic. G, panic, fight, flight, um, me, myself, my survival, don't care about anybody else, you know, stock up my garage, stock up my house, as long as I'm okay, as long as my family's okay, I'm good. And then 
we have an energy where it shifts into uh, the compliant energy. Compliancy is when we talk very, very specifically about the structure, the strategy, the planning, the order, um, the organization of things. And this is what we moved into the next stage. Well, hang on. It wasn't a very good move having 10 bottles of milk and taking away the shelves are empty. The person who needed it, almost a cushion, they had nothing there. They didn't have any food. And so the hamdardi comes back in, but the love comes from inside. If you start to think about how you can strategize this properly and put an order in place. So that's the next phase that comes in. The third phase, I'm, I'm rushing this a little bit just because I want to be aware of our time. The third phase comes into the influencer phase. Phase. And the influence is the I energy where we start to think about freedoms, frivolousness, and, and I want my, my rights back, I want my understanding back. This is the distracted stage from the core understanding of what's on. We'll go out and, and risk being uh, in the open without lockdown, without SDP, without social distancing protocol. We'll try to do uh, whatever we can against the will of the, of the nation. And this is where the the I, I have my own rights and freedoms comes involved. And that's basically the third phase. We're currently in that phase where we make these frivolous uh, energetic choices. But the final phase will become stability where we come back into rest, safety, security, and life becomes a new norm somewhere along the line. But that phase, in order that phase to happen in our current COVID crisis, is for us to have either an inhibitor or a vaccine uh, of some kind. That's the only time that stability can come in. We might be rotating between these as fight flight if there's another wave two we go fight flight flight again go straight into compliance we start to order conscientiousness and then we go back into re retaliation rejection again and then we'll come back to safety at that end point hope this has helped a little bit but just before i finish the key here is wherever you are it's correct just to be aware of it um there's no right and wrong everyone's got their own version of the world and as long as we can bring our core understanding which is our natural understanding of ourselves because all of us have a humanity we are the same philosophy within us especially with our guru nanak devji our founder sharing that we are in a state of love which is what we, not, we need to do and guru gobind singh's philosophy of which is in Tav Prasad Savaya, and specifically uh, allows us to understand that unless we speak the truth and let me tell you the truth and listen to the truth and become the truth and become love we can't connect to god anyway um, so in that humble understanding the shifts between these phases has is always ignited by that self-love again. So you go from the dominant fight, flight, as you said, um, the selflessness, selfness of it, to shift from there to the compliance energy, we have to have that ignition of love once again. Um, so we start to think about the what effect it's having on other people. I've hoarded it all. Did I really need all that? And we start giving back to food banks and the six Sangat across the globe has given so much back in Seva. So we have that energy of effort energy shifts to the C and from C again to shift it into the I energy after the state of love. Do you know what? I really love my mum, my dad who's stuck across the other side of the city or I've got to go there. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a go. So that love again energizes you that way. And what's the same again when you get the, stability, when you get the, final, uh, the final stage of shift from influencing energy towards stability energy again love will be the case of i feel safe again it's okay myself gratitude and you move that so Bahi Guruji, if i helped a little bit i hope that helps a little bit uh, so I think what's interesting about what you're talking about is that if you if you look at it from a, a flow chart perspective and kind of take it back to the kind of it's a, a cyclical thing you know kind of a thing that goes around and taking you back to number three as you were talking about it it actually uh, resonated with me about where people are. If they are between stages three and four, which is the stage between actually saying, I'm about to get inverted commas, my freedom to mm -hmm. the fact that now I can be more trusting of what's around me, which is stage four. There is unfortunately a situation right now where people will vent, people will um, be frustrated, right? So when yes. I talk about optimism, there's the danger as you said before between three and four as they're moving between the the whatever the new normal is going to be uh, or the fact that maybe there's another stage which is where they will forget that they had an opportunity to to think and contemplate gary, gary you mentioned earlier on I, some I of the just things so that you may be on just a second that optimism itself is ignited at the point of love Hannah. so when you have that shift from phases one two three and four 
you get back into the state of love and love itself is optimism. This is connected back to God. So what happens then immediately within ourselves, gurus within, we connect to this and we move forward. So optimism is inevitable. We will have an inevitable optimism in everything we do because as humankind, we never think we're doing anything wrong anyway. Um, even when it's you know some, an atrocity, we don't believe that's wrong at the time of committing that atrocity. Our key here is to be able to resonate back with the core values of humanity to see if that can work with us and save and serve others as well. So I beg your pardon for interrupting there. No, that's fine. No, it's fine. I mean, I think, you know, I was just going to say about Gary, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, again, you know, you guys are masters at developing uh, better strategies to help people. We were talking earlier on, uh, and you, you mentioned it to bring Gary in at this point, some of the, big, uh, I would call them outreach programs uh, for individuals. Um, now you, you have a Friday session that you run, uh, you, uh, it's quite interesting, you have virtual rooms where people can work together with a facilitator, a leader in that group to help. And you mentioned Samaritans, it's not obviously the, on that scale, but you've obviously vetted the individuals. But the, the, the stage which we were talking about where people are frustrated, where they can't see optimism, where they can't build their own confidence, um, you've done something to help that. And you have these little groups. Um, Gary, tell us about those in, in the context of those Friday the funky Friday sessions that you do, you yeah. know? Yeah, yes. Thank you, Dr. Sabian. Thank you for having us today. Um, the Feel Good Friday was really uh, brought about because a lot of our clients, and we were hearing also socially that a lot of people were lonely. Um, now, depending upon your psychometric that Suk has just gone through, uh, various people will be happy about the situation. Others would have been fearful of the situation. Others would have just embraced and said, oh, well, whatever. Uh, and then lastly, you'd have had those that, that are quite happy to be on their own. Um, and what we found, particularly with those that the, the compliant, we'll take the compliance first of all, they love being on their own but that's their choice. And what happened with this pandemic that went worldwide, and I think this is where the difference comes, because it was worldwide, it was, as you said in your opening, Dr. Savi, completely unprecedented. Nobody had anything to go by. The closest thing that we probably had to an understanding was back in World Wars One and Two, where it was hitting everybody. Um, unfortunately, we've not seen anything like that since. Um, because it hit everyone at about the same time or within a month of each other, there was nothing to go on. There were no rules. Everybody was playing it by ear, effectively. So the, the compliant nature loves being on its own generally. However, they were forced into being on their own. And as such, somebody who would normally be quite comfortable being alone, not talking to anybody suddenly felt fearful so i think <clears throat> what happened here um and the reason that we brought feel good friday in was we wanted to give people a platform to be able to just come and talk remember we, we were in a situation where nobody could see family other than their immediate household technically they couldn't go outside unless they were a key worker we were confined to barracks effectively how else do we communicate with each other we have the telephone but unless you're on uh, an android system or a, an iphone or something like that there are a number of people out there who don't have smartphones or iphones therefore it's still just calling and hearing a voice and what we wanted to do using and we use the platform of zoom um, there are other, obviously other platforms that we use, but we used Zoom. We were, enable, we were a, able to enable a group of our inspired tribe, we call them, our own, our own followers within Suki's group. We were able to enable them to come and just talk about how they were feeling. You know, you, you alluded to um, like a Samaritan feel. Um, all we wanted to do was give them something to hope for something to be able to vent at something where they could share how they were getting on during the day and that's what feel good friday was all about and we've just done our um eighth episode our eighth week of, of uh, feel good friday and what's happened is we've actually found people now calling it the start of their weekend 
it's not the feel good friday end of the week it's now feel good friday start of the weekend it's like a party that you know we go to parties on a friday evening because we want to forget about the week and start the weekend this is what feel good friday is about um we know we have the inspired dinners which was again something that suki i uh, and uh, jitendra and a couple of other members of the group started which was getting people around a table to have a chat social it wasn't a business thing it's not to sell it's it's just purely to network and talk to friends on a so what do you do what does your pet do what do your hobbies that sort of thing and that's what feel good friday was about and all we do now is we give people the opportunity of coming along and talking we might have some uh, topics that we we talk about and discuss and we've now brought in rooms chat rooms to enable with four or five different subjects people to just choose a subject they want to talk about yeah and, it's, it's and, a, and oh. the other thing also, it's, a, it's a, and evolve actually i think that's what you're saying i think i think it's a safe mm. environment as well um where totally uh, safe I, totally safe yeah and, and what, what you were saying about it being the start of the weekend or the start of you know of doing whatever you wouldn't do at work uh, it's interesting that it's also an opportunity to i wouldn't say vent but to reflect right and it's kind of the, the second part of what we were going to talk about today which we have touched on quite a lot we spoke about optimism we spoke about the fact that it's a, it's a retrospective but without having um see it's interesting suki you mentioned a term earlier when we were having a chat earlier on in, in the morning about kind of a you know a call to self which has a lovely lovely term that you came up with i think you should copyright it um it, it, you know you you, you you put down a set of things that you're going to do if you're on a website you might go oh call to action at the end i'll press the contact us button as a trivial example but a call to self is i've actually had somebody help me i now have a set of things that i could do going forward let's let's move on to the final part because we've got about five to six minutes to go i wanted to ask you about the the business confidence side of things one mm. of the things that you talk about to when people come and join that group is the sense of you know obviously there's the you know the companionship which is physical you know not having that but you have that in that forum but in the back of their minds they may be worried because they've been furloughed they may be worried because their particular consultancy or work it needs to be looked at again because um, maybe they won't have a contract maybe they won't have a permanent job after a certain period maybe in october when the you know those particular firms stop uh, are having to you know uh, pay a greater amount you know, compared to what the government's actually subsidizing at the moment unfortunately those firms may make a decision and say well we can't afford you anymore so mm -hmm. that will be trying on the back of people's minds but we look at it from an employer perspective how do the employers and obviously they have to impart that as leadership to their people that work for them who actually do the real work right in terms of the day-to-day -day transactions how do they build that confidence what tools and techniques can they use that will really give them that sense of you know, and obviously in the back of their mind you, we mentioned it earlier there could be a second wave how do we kind of build that confidence in business but also give those individuals the call to self to not only do something different but maybe actually think about their situations in a different way. I love it. So, wow, what a deep question. So the first thing is obviously they need to have a reference of self um, in the whole of this, because all of this revolves around our version of the world. Korzybski, there's a gentleman called Alfred Korzybski, um, and he says very clearly that uh, we ourselves as humans are meaning making machines. We constantly make meanings. Our Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji very clearly says, Apana Aapa Jano. So that's the first es essence of any kind of change. Learn yourself first. So in context of that, if you start to get an understanding of self, I mean, by the way, you can go straight on to Inspired University. Uh, dot com forward slash disc if you want to do the assessments of understanding self um, but if you go on learning yourself the principal understanding is if you have a reference of yourself you can then adapt to the world and this is the optimism of business that we're talking about the tools that one can take is use the disc psychometrics to learn self so you can move forward with life um, it gives you an, an understanding of an adaption that your version of the world is not the world at large not the reality it's just your reality and as long as there is some optimism which is love and light that we will always adapt and we must understand that whether it's brexit whether it's covid whatsoever, mankind humanity will persevere and will prosper the gurus jesus given us the understanding of that we will persevere and we will grow. 
So just to clarify for me, with reference to the actions, sorry, I'm speaking fast just due to time. The actions that one could take very clearly is just to look if they were a business, if they were an employer, or even if they were an employee, a part of a business, if they were an employed individual, um, self-employed, and they, they don't have any staff, it's still the same principle. The first thing is take heed of where we are, reduce our outgoing expenses, so we can keep them in check. Take the sabbaticals that have been given to us. And I've, I have an online show, which I talk about this with reference to the Daily Tips show on our channel. Thank you very much. On our channel, which is Suki Wahiwala official content on YouTube. Um, and on there, we've, we've spoken very clearly about certain aspects of this, what we're talking about now, and you can go into much deeper dives there. Get clear on what you're trying to achieve, get your expenses down and get the assistances from the government which, which are supporting us all. Now we move forward into what is it that, what's the, the psychology that I train here with the Synegus method. Um, I share a lot in universities and around the world with Maharaj the Kidpa, um, uh, to share the knowledge. The principle here is that make a note of what actual skills do I have? Yeah. First question is what skills do I have? Create a list. Then ask yourself, what is it that I actually like doing? I make a list. The third thing would be is ask yourself, what resources do I actually have right now? Which is, could I have a, do I have a car? Do I have a house? Do I have something that's valuable to somebody else and to myself? The fourth thing would be is, this is the core of understanding of how to keep the optimism, the focus going is getting an understanding that there is going to be a good way forward. And we call this pivoting. So to pivot, and I've been talking about this for nearly 15 years of my life, we need to pivot our skills, our resources, our mindset, and our uniqueness within ourselves for the outside world, including the assets we have within the company, which are the resources. If we have an office, how can we now use that office? If we had a, a business center, how can we now change that? How can we adapt ourselves, which is pivoting? So these are the key questions that one would say to ourselves. So recently I shared within an interview very, very quickly with an ESP magazine, which is a, a, a press, national press around talking in a business section. And within three minutes, I was given a challenge to speak very quickly about three different types of businesses and what they could do. So may I share that now? Yeah, absolutely. I think we've got about two, three minutes actually, yeah. Okay. One of the things would be, let's say if you had a taxi company or a taxi driver, well, go and pivot yourself and see, I've got the assets of a taxi, the ability to drive, and I must have the uh, uh, the mission to step forward and do something about myself. You know, cover your face, get the PPE in place, put the safety in place, having spray in the back for keeping people safe and yourself and clean and hygiene away, and then going out and actually saying, actually, do you know what? Elderly people, like the sick have been doing around the world, elderly people sitting at home, how can I serve them better? What if I turned around and went to all the restaurants, all the takeaways, all the grocery stores and said to them, have you got anybody who's in a disadvantaged position who requires a delivery? I will do the delivery for you for a set fixed fee within parameters. So we've got fixed fee scenario. And now you're back on the road, you're delivering without people, you're just going to collect bags and you're dropping off home. That's one opportunity It's a pivot very clearly, temporarily, while people are not using taxis so much. The second thing, let's say we look at, um, an individual who's working for a corporate organization, the skills that they have learnt and understood, they could come to media and start to delivering, start to deliver this information via a training and education, which is a, a booming market right now, where they could share their skills to help other people like we are today with this amazing initiative that you have, uh, Dr. Savvy. So there's just a couple of quick points where I've got the skills, how can I share them? What do I have? What resources? How can I repurpose them? But in an immediacy, and due to the case of time, I'll just go quiet there if it's okay. No, that's okay. No, I was going to say that that's a really good example. And I'm just bringing Gary back in for a second, because obviously, you know, your business is very much around the kind of face to face coaching, as well as guidance, as well as career progression and advising companies. So you haven't actually been able to do that. So in a way, Gary, you have had to use uh, Zoom and video conferencing as your tool. And we mentioned earlier, remember, I, I gave the case of somebody who had a henna product and uh, she can't do the henna, but she mm -hmm. is able to make products and able to train people. Uh, and actually have colouring books. What a, what a brilliant bit of innovation that is. I mean, uh, so I mean, I'll, I'll leave the final minute, uh, 30 seconds to both of you. Is this a, a quick question? Is this a time for innovation? Gary first, and then Suki, I'll get you to finish. Totally is, Dr. Savvy. Uh, we've seen it within our own clients. Um, we ourselves have innovated the business, the business growth mastermind. And actually, we're looking for any individuals with skills who would like to share those, have leadership 
if they'd like to, because we, we are expanding the business growth mastermind now because of being able to do it on Zoom, we're, we're expanding it nationally. So if people would like to offer their services, uh, please contact me on Gary at BBR.club and um, let's, let's have a chat and email me. I mean, I've seen it, however, very quickly with uh, colleagues I've worked with and dog walkers who I go out with in the mornings and they are adapting their businesses. Um, we've got painters and decorators who are going in and masking up rooms. Uh, we've got uh, hairdressers who are doing new things. So there are so many businesses. I've even seen the taxi drivers locally with plastic uh, sheets in between the front cockpit and the back cockpit to protect themselves. So I think people generally are being optimistic and they are looking at innovative ways of, uh, of, of coping with this unprecedented scenery. So can you. I was going to say that, uh, human ingenuity, really, isn't it? I mean, uh, so it, is, last it is. It um, is. With with blessings, one hundred percent. What I'm just going to echo what Gary just said there. It, there's always going to be um, some positivity out of adversity. So we've got to look for it. You know, there's an old saying that if I don't want to find it, I will never see it. So we have to just change our insides to see the positivity in the flow. And I'm going to say, of course, please reach out to us. I mean, we ourselves have gone out in that way, as I said to you with Seva, with the uh, Maharaj's Girpa, with God's great gratitude that we're trying to help and serve people to get them up. Even those Feel Good Fridays are very structured, very orderly. So we're creating that change for people. And we're also offering platform for people with skills uh, that they can share with other people so they can actually host one of these rooms to give that innovation and give them the facility to step out of their norm oh, yeah. and bring a confidence up and finally um, with the business growth mastermind program we're looking for individuals so who are in the professional realm who currently may have been out of business and we're looking for ambassadors forward slash chapter leaders in various cities so we're going to go global we've already already planned it before we have a full franchise model um by all means please reach out to gary as i said uh or find me on social media and please find me on suki you're, you're, you're all over social media both of you i'm going to say well, thanks so much for joining me uh, we'd go thank slightly you. over but that's okay uh, gary thank you for your time it's so nice to meet you again after ages and suki um you know we know each other from before it's so good to see you again uh, and i say thanks to the audience for tuning in and we will look forward to seeing you next time thank you dr savi and uh, listeners too thank you i take it as a cut <laughs> As a, as a, uh, yeah, maybe Stevie's okay. Yeah, finish. That was uh, 57, 57. Yeah, I think we're okay now. Okay. Let me just thank you share. for the platform for us to share. And thank you as always with your ingenuity. Great question. Yeah, ingenuity, focus, and drive. Really, really a pleasure having uh, you uh, as part of the being the host and being on your team. Um, well, no, it's good, good that you spent time in it, Gary, and you, you brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, you know, came in at the right time, right good examples, um, you know, very relevant indeed. Appreciate it. And Suki, it was a pleasure as well with you. Um, okay. I think it's a, a great time for people to to rethink. Uh, I think we, we, we kind of champion this uh, optimism cause, um, mm -hmm. but I think it leads to so many avenues because either it's a, it's a call to self about changing what you do, uh, but also it leads to opportunities to maybe do things slightly differently to the way you're used to. Uh, I just hope that we're not going to get gaslit, um, uh, if you're familiar with that term, that in six months' time we go, oh, well, that was just a blip on the horizon. It, oh. it really was something, yeah, it, it never really happened. But I think hopefully it has put in place new ways of working and new realizations, I think. Yeah, I think you've well, correct. call to self as well, 100%. Sorry, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I was talking to one of the, the people I meet in the mornings, uh, and she was saying she's a graphic designer. Her company have sent everybody home to work at home. They've actually said this morning, right, 